when the sun goes down and the lights turn on, this place becomes one amazingly strange neon blockbuster set. Something about Tokyo at night. It is a must experience for every world traveler. I want to give you a metaphor that captures this feeling. Imagine a Japanese salary. Okay, lives a relatively normal life, goes to the company, works long hours, and then the moment he steps outside, boom! Lights, flashes, colors all around, and in an instant, his normal, regular life disappears, and his mind enters into this video game world, and he sees words scrolling across the screen of his mind, saying, Mission, conquer Tokyo. And in that moment, he knows, I know, and you'd better well know, that this is the start of the most epic night of walking, eating, and drinking on the town that has ever been experienced. So tonight, I'm gonna introduce you to three different spots of Tokyo after dark. Now, as with every video on this trip, I've got a challenge assigned to me by the Spin the Wheel app, okay? And today's challenge is do the Oreo Stacking Tower Challenge. My first stop is Ueno. And Ueno holds a special place in my heart because Ueno at night was the first image that I got of Japan from this trip. You have to understand, after three years of living in China without leaving the country and so much anticipation for this trip and 24 hours of straight travel builds up to this moment emerging from Ueno Station. And in that moment, it was like time froze. It's Christmas Eve in the heart of Tokyo and every man, woman, and child is out and about, face covered with a mask, buildings glowing all around. You look down an alley over here, over there, you can see a train bustling on overhead. All kinds of delicious, delicious looking restaurants. Each one looks like it could serve you the best meal of your life. It was this moment of, oh my god. God, I'm in Tokyo right now. The heart of Ueno is Ameo Yokocho Street, home to Ameo Yokocho Market. And this is the perfect place to buy some bargain souvenirs if you're in Tokyo. But it actually started as a black market after World War II. And that right there, I think, sums up the essence of Ueno. I mean, Japan is a clean place, but Ueno, especially at night, has this charming kind of New York city grind, kind of wear and tear, that I think can best be seen in the trains here. Right behind me is this little clothing market, like a little alley. It runs right underneath the train tracks. And inside, it's so loud and crazy when the train comes through. The ceiling is like vibrating. The next stop is Akihabara. And the best way to describe this place is like a 1980s city that's a candy land. But the candy is video games and adult stores. This place is just downright weird and I fit right in. But video games and adult stores are just the start of this candy land. I mean, we're talking manga, anime, maid cafes, restaurants, and of course, electronics. Around the 1980s, Akihabara was arguably the center of electronics in the world. And back then, and even still today, many consider it to be the center of Japanese pop culture. I'm not really into this kind of stuff, but for otaku, which is basically a Japanese culture nerd, this place is mecca. Welcome everyone to Shinjuku Station. According to some people, it's the busiest train station in the world. An average of 3.6 million people per day pass through this train station. And I have been walking around for like 15 minutes trying to find the correct exit. This place is like a maze. When you come to Shinjuku, 
gotta come to Omoide Yokocho. Just like Ameya Yokocho, Omoide Yokocho also began as a black market after World War II and even has a greater sense of grittiness to it. Omoide Yokocho literally translates as memory lane, but it's more colloquially known as Piss Alley. In addition to the tastiest holes in the walls this side of Tokyo, you'll find plenty of bars down this alley. And if you stay out late enough, it wouldn't be unheard of to find an intoxicated gentleman taking a whiz off the side of the street. I'm now standing in an area of alleys called Golden Guy. I've been to a lot of weird streets on this tour, but this by far takes the cake. Because it's quite early and most of the bars haven't opened up yet, this place has this real eerie feeling. It's like stumbling upon a zombie's neighborhood when all the zombies are sleeping. The best way I can explain this place is if you went into like a recycled dumpster to construct an alley of bars in the best way possible. It has this really unique, old, eccentric, hipster vibe. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna get... That's the Tokyo Sky Tree, and it's time to make a tower in front of a tower. I met uh, oh. some willing companions to compete in the Oreo Stacking Tower Challenge with me. Yeah. Okay, so basically how this works is I bought, I got a bag of Oreos here. We stack them one by one. One by one. One by one. If the person who stacks the last Oreo and it falls, that is the loser of the challenge. Oh, you're, you're gonna do this now. Oh, no. Oh, no. Four. Okay, four. Five. Oh, no. He's playing. He's playing. Six. Okay, I'm gonna have to open a new bag here. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, this is scary. <laughs> that has to be the lowest number of Oreos for this challenge. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me. Tokyo is an amazing dynamic city no matter the time of day. But during the day compared to at night, it's like comparing a sketch drawing versus a 3D sculpture. At night, it just pops out at you in this inexplicable way. It doesn't even feel like being on Earth. It feels like being in this spectacular alien city where the more you discover, the more you crave to explore it. I wish you were here. You can help me eat some Oreos. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and like it. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode. On the next episode of my On the Ground Japan tour. In the next 24 hours, I'm going to visit 100 temples and or shrines traveling only on foot.